We would like to have a few people share some things with Bill. We've got five seats right here in the front for the Norton Levering, Levering Norton plan. So Bill, we need you. And if Abby's in the room, we invite her to join you as well. Abby! <laughs> Here's a seat! Valerie! <laughs> and Valerie, Valerie is out and about exploring. So thank you. We're going to ask you to sit here in these chairs. I'll go see if I can find her. Because Dell is going to be speaking first to you in addition to a few other people. Um, I take no control over the weather, that is obvious. And um, but we're glad that we can gather from here at last. Thank you, Lynn. Bill Levering. <laughs> Bill Levering. You, you, you may be seated. This this gathering, in case uh, you don't know it, is all about Bill Levering. Did you know that? And what I'd like to uh, talk about is exactly how did this guy from the Midwest who was preaching in Philadelphia and teaching in seminary end up in Schenectady? Well, let me tell you how. There came a time when FRC was looking for a new senior pastor. Our longtime senior minister, Bob White, had announced his retirement. A search committee was formed of which Carolyn Jones Assini, who's seated here, there she is in the back, and I were co-chairs. Besides Carolyn and I, we had a great group of dedicated folks working very hard to bring the best available candidate to our church. We prayed a lot. And I would be remiss if I didn't say who our synod um, overseer and helper and friend was, and that was our dearly beloved Greg Mass. So notices went out, resumes were read, research was done, spreadsheets were made. Then came a narrowing of the field down to a few very good candidates. And finally, interviews were held. And still, we could not decide who to choose, who to choose. And then, at a neutral church, Bill preached. That was the winning ticket. In fact, for all the years that Bill has been here, Bill Rochelle, who was on that committee, and I often still turn to each other after one of Bill's sermons and say, we never knew how smart we were. And as an amazing bonus, Abby became a part of our lives, a minister, a senior, a synod leader, musician, and the biggest accomplishment of all, mother to beautiful Valerie. Oh, and did I tell you that Bill has this habit, perhaps it goes back to his days as a professor, of answering questions with a letter grade. <laughs> you might say, how you doing, Bill? Oh, I'd say A minus. Good sermon, Bill. Was it? Uh, I gave it a B plus. Well, Bill Levering, I'm no professor, but I'd say that as a minister, administrator, consensus builder and visionary here at this old church you've been an A plus thank you our next speaker is Brandon thank you Dell it's so nice to see you Bill. So just a couple of very quick words. So Dell has been uh, with the church for a long time and our family has not. And so I think this is an interesting um, juxtaposition, I'll say. So when we first came to this church, the building uh, really impressed me. I'm in the building and construction industry and um, the, the building impressed me. And the congregation w welcomed our family like no other congregation ever has. But 
Bill Levering kept me coming back. And, you know, I don't have a, a particularly strong faith, but Bill's ministry is such that without having a, a, a very strong faith, I do aspire to do good things, and I always have. And the way Bill preaches, the way he behaves around all of us really just kind of made me feel that that was okay, and I was, I was welcomed. So he, Bill invites us to think, and he guides us, but he doesn't tell us what to think. And I think that that is a, a really important characteristic of a senior minister and of a leader. Um, that really is leadership. He did the same thing when it came to the making room uh, building campaign that I was a part of. Uh, he guided what we called the ORCs, the Owners' Representatives Committee, through the project. And, you know, he would check in with us all the time, making sure to remind us of what the big picture was, asking us if we needed his help, but never getting in our way, never, never telling us what to do. Um, so, in closing, the, the summary here is, you kept me coming back, you guided me, and I appreciate that. And, you know, a good leader moves an organization in a desired direction, and I think Bill did a fantastic job of doing that from, from what I've seen. Um, you did an amazing job as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, and I already missed you. Thank you, Brandon. Let's see, I've got a little uh, cheat sheet here as to who's speaking next. Uh, Amy Bruley, please. Thank you, Dal. It's with gratitude that all of us who came from Union Presbyterian Church, honor Bill today. Let me just give you a reading on the vision between UPC and FRC. Union Presbyterian Church and First Reformed Church serve to strive each other in a community of faith aimed at sharing worship, mission, resources, and a joint endeavor that will bring us together as one body of Christ. By joining us together, we hope to be an ever strong voice for our mission in the community. Bill Levering has helped us from Union Press to envision all of this in the short seven years that we've been here. Our two churches made history. We were forming by a joint congregational witness. If you look that up on Google, there are no answers. <laughs> no answers at all. It was totally different. But as I tell a little bit of a story, I want you to bear in mind that Bill was right there behind us, pushing, encouraging us, giving us a little bit of advice, but shepherding us. So Albany Presbytery voted and approved on, in September 2014 the forming of a trans, uh, joint congregational witness with First Reform. This was a very difficult moment. We were a big church in the Presbytery. We had money. We didn't need to close our doors. What are these people doing? They can't leave us. Well, I'll tell you a little bit of our story. Then, in October 2014, the classes of First Reformed Church uh, approved the Joint Congregational Witness. In an article in the Gazette, it stated that both churches sent a very affirmative message about Christian fellowship 
that we must be strong. To be strong, we must work together. So just a little bit of how did this all happen. Back in 2010, Union Press saw several churches getting very small, closing their doors, the church building not used, and they did not have a destination. We did studies over about a five year and said, you know, this could be us. What can we do? We sent out letters to many churches in the area, a couple Presbyterian churches, Emmanuel Friedens, Niskian Reform, and First Reform. First Reform, Reform had a very positive interest. Their demographics were changing a little bit. Bill and the congregation were eager to explore this. So in September of 2011, Bill Levering and Reverend Ruth Quo, pastor at Union, Liz Mastriani, and myself had a brief meeting and began discussion. It wasn't very long after that, in uh, January of 2012, that we were invited, UPC were invited, to share Wednesday evening services of Lenten and soup and study. Shortly thereafter, in the fall of that year, leaders of both churches had a retreat at Camp Fowler. And just bear in mind, Bill's name is between uh, uh, with all of us. And Daniel Carlson led some faith enrichment classes at Union. One of the interesting points where we really got a grasp of everything was in January of 2013. That was the time in which uh, Bill gave a sermon lifting the benefits of a joint witness. And by February of that year, our church took a straw poll and said, let's move forward. We formed task forces of all the things that you have to do when a church was ready to close down or to be sold. At that point, a lot of the things that were near and dear to us, Bill said, let's do them. You know, let's hear what they are. The men's breakfast, evening circle for women, horizon Bible study, uh, the youth uh, reach work camp, and our mission foundation funds, and many more. And then on World Communion Sunday, just like today, but this was 2014, our two churches celebrated the joint witness with uh, a, a wonderful sermon and a lovely reception at the light edge, at the water's light edge felt. And this celebration has continued in January for many years since. So, Bill, First Reform, all of you out there, you opened your home to us. You made us feel special. You made us feel like we had something to offer, something to work together. God has blessed us. He continues to share his love and blessing with all of us. What a beautiful gift we've all been given to be able to be together. Bill, you have been our shepherd, our guide, and for all of this, we say thank you from Union Presbyterian Church. Mike Lawrence. Hello. Uh, I've been charged with running the Jazz Vespers program since Tom DeAndrea retired from booking the acts. And my introduction to Bill was 10 to 12 years ago. 
and it was similar to this. I had no preparation, no notes. Just show up. What are you playing today? <laughs> and the thing he said that first time I met him, I think, struck with me the most, and it, it, it hit it right on the head in a way I couldn't have put it into words myself. He said, musicians have a different spirituality and have connected with God in ways that are maybe different from other folks when he asked what my background was and, and what brought me here. And now we're here. Now he's baptized two of my three children. And we, we had the last one as part of a jazz Vesper service with Nat Phipps on piano. And, and if you're here in the room, obviously, you know Bill well. You've had a phone call or maybe shared a drink with him or a meal. And that's why we're here. We're all here because of Bill. So thank you for you may as well have invented jazz vespers. We know you didn't, but you brought it to us, and we'll continue it on in your honor and Tom's honor and, and do our best to serve you. And, and thank you all, and thanks, Bill, and your family for sharing your time with us all and bringing us all together here, and, and thank you for this space. see two ladies approaching. Yeah, there we go, Joanne and Lynn. So I was asked to share a little bit about what it is to be a pastor emeritus. And there's really just a little bit. So Bill retired not quite a year ago. How many days we got? 12 more? 12 more since I started? Bill retired, and shortly after that, the classes and the consistory both agreed to make him Pastor Emeritus. To, to say thank you for his service here, being Pastor Emeritus is, is an honorific title. It doesn't mean there's a job that comes with it, and it's not like a professor who might continue to have an office and all that kind of stuff. Bill worked very hard to clean out his office before he left. And Ruth Roynos worked very hard after he left to help clean it out some more with all the books that were left. But if a senior pastor wants to invite the pastor emeritus to do something, he or she or they can do that. And he or she or they probably will. But we are glad to honor you today sorry we couldn't do it in the way that we had hoped to do it outside and sorry that you didn't get to enjoy this a year ago but better late than never um, in recognition bill and a tribute to you with your years of ministry here with us at first reformed church we had a local uh, design company create for us a plaque that we are going to mount on the wall in the Mohawk house in the area where there are sofas and chairs and it will be hung above the bay window there. And uh, we took that spot because we know at one point with Room for All Ideas, you surfaced the idea of a gathering space where people could have a cup of coffee with one another and chat, catch up on things. And that is a space where we can do that, and hopefully sooner versus later, that we can go inside and have coffee. Um, but we will show you this. We call it a plaque. We could call it a sign. And on it is a spork. <laughs> Hold it up. This is somewhat flimsy. It's, a, it's acrylic. Oh. And it has the, the blessing on it that Bill did after each service on Sunday morning, Romans 12, with a spork, with his name, and his day with our ministry brother that you're here with us. That's the program. That's the whole thing. So we would invite you to stay and visit as long as you'd like. I know Mike and Dave are going to keep playing out in the, in the hallway there, and your lunches are ready. And I know that Karen and Sharon are ready to hand out the appropriate lunches to the appropriate people. Um, maybe there's a place you can find where you can sit and eat with somebody. It doesn't look like it's pouring at this point, but they have picked up the chairs, so it's going to be a little tough out there. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you, Bill, for being here today and uh, for serving this church for so long. And 
Have a great afternoon, everybody. But visit as long as you'd like. Stay and visit as long as you'd like. <laughs>